okay so what is a closed set uh, this is something that uh, what is a closed set if its complement is open okay so a set you take a set okay so let me call this c which is a subset of r is set to be closed to be closed if c complement is open right what is uh, suppose uh, okay let me look at the example here so suppose i have 2 comma 3 and this is a closed set do you agree why uh, well let's look at the complement what is the complement of this all the numbers between 2 and 3 2 and 3 included should not be there in the set so what do you mean by that you start at minus infinity all the way till 2 2 not included right union all the way from 3 to 3 not included to infinity so this will be so this is an open set why uh, you take any point in the complement right so i can always find an epsilon room in the set okay uh, is this fine it's like this if i want to call this room as an open set then the wall should not be a part of this or, or uh, the edges should not be a part of this particular set then you take any point inside this uh, room then i can find a small tiny room around that so that the entire that tiny room is within this room right that's what it means okay is this clear okay um, one more notion uh, okay so this is something that you will see uh, in the subsequent uh, lectures later on a compact set how many of you have heard of a compact set yes have you studied this in your calculus course compact set huh well nothing great uh, it's a closed and bounded set is a compact set okay so a set is set s or is compact if it is closed and bounded well, what do you mean by bounded? Can somebody tell me what is bounded? Hmm? It has fixed points where it ends. Ah, well, it's very vague, right? Yeah, you are right. I mean, pictorially, that's what you see. You should end somewhere. But uh, you should be a little more precise, right, when you say that. So. To converge at a point. Uh, okay, so one second. Uh, let me ask uh, people here. Yeah, you were saying something. Oh, there is no series. It's a set, right? Okay, so essentially, you take any point in the set. Mod of that should be less than infinity. Right? That means x should be less than infinity or x should be greater than minus infinity. Right? Strictly greater than. Then it's bounded. So in other words, uh, you know, you can put that set within a larger but finite size set. Right? Then we say that it's bounded. Okay? So um, let me write it here. So what is a bounded set? A set is bounded if for every x in the set, a set let me call b, okay, b is bounded if for every b mod x is less than infinity, okay, it's a bounded set. What is a closed set? You know what a closed set is, right? The complement should be open. So can you give me an example of a compact set? Huh? Concentric circles, let's only stay in R now, okay, let's not go to R2 or higher dimension. In R, can you give me an example for a compact set? Huh? But the definition says it should be closed, right? You cannot take an open set. All open sets are excluded now. You cannot uh, say that op the moment you say open, then it's not uh, a compact set. Closed set 1 to 2, right? So example, closed set 1 to 2. Anything else? You, you see why it's called compact, right? It's, it's like one go and it's very compact, right? 
when you say it's not compact, you have some chunk here and you have some other chunk here and so on, right? So, um, I mean, the lack of, uh, uh, so what about, okay, let me ask you this. What about this guy? Is it compact? Yes, right? Why it's closed? It's bounded because all the numbers are finite, right? Right. So there are so many examples of compact uh, set. Okay. So keep this in mind. So why is it important? Uh, well, it, it turns out that if you have uh, a function, uh, let's say a nice continuous function. So what, we will see what continuous functions are. Yes. It's closed but not compact. Okay, so uh, this is a trivial example, right? It's not closed, but it's closed but compact, not compact, right? Or I'll include infinity as well, right? It's closed but not compact. Okay, so uh, fine. Okay, so uh, if you take a continuous function, uh, in a smaller, let's say, or a compact set, you can always find a minima. Okay, so that's why compact sets are very important because the moment you say some uh, a function or a compact set, then you are guaranteed to find a minima, right? Whenever the function is continuous, right? at least you are guaranteed, right? Therefore, uh, compact sets are quite important. Okay, so now uh, there are two other very very important notions uh, which I will. Uh, uh, talk about and then we will move on to maybe linear algebra okay so uh, suppose i take this uh, again this is an example suppose i give you this set okay so 0 comma 3 this is a set right can you give me the maximum element of the set what do you think is the maximum element see by the end of the day you have to find maximum minima of something right so Let's start with the set. So, what is the maximum element of this set? Okay, what is the maximum element of this set? Three, right? What about zero comma three, where three is not included? What is maximum? Two, sir. Yes. Two, sir. How can two point one is more than two, right? So that cannot be maximum, right? The limiting value that is going towards. Uh, that is going towards is not the answer. You should give me one number, right? So whenever I say maximum, you should say one number, right? Right? So, huh? Doesn't exist, right? Maximum doesn't exist for this, right? This. But what can you say about three? three you know, if you are a practitioner, uh, well, uh, you can afford to, you know. Pull three into the set and say, well, three is a good number, or something very, very, very close to three is a good approximation for maxima, right? So now um, we will have a name for this. So, for example, three, although not a maximum number, uh, strictly speaking, why? Because three is not there in the set, right? So therefore, I cannot say three is maximum. We'll give it a name. So, do you know the name for that? Supremum, right? How many of you are uh, familiar with this? All of you are familiar. Okay, so uh, this is called the supremum. Okay, supremum of the set. What can you say about minimum element here? Now, what is the minimum element of zero comma three? This particular set here, zero, right? So that's the minimum element. What about uh, this set? What is the minimum? Doesn't exist, right? What about uh, infimum? Zero. So, what? How do you define infimum and supremum now? Well, how do you define? Well, let's look at number. Let's take some hint on this. So let's say 0, 3. Well, uh, if I take a number here, for example, 4, what can you say about this number? Definitely 4 is larger than every element in the set. So it's got an upper bound, right? How do you define an upper bound of a set? Uh, well, a, a number A is said to be an upper bound on the set capital A. If you, uh, if you take any element in capital A, it's smaller than small A, right? So that's how you define upper bound. Now, what can you say about this? Let's say 3.5. Lowest upper, upper bound. bound. Yeah, lowest or the least upper bound is called a supremum, right? So I'll 
so least upper bound of a set is called the supremum okay so you can mathematically define it uh, i think i just now mentioned how to define mathematically what about infimum so let's say minus 1 do you think uh, what, what can you say about minus 1 so any element in the set 0 3 is larger than minus 1 right what about minus 0.5 still larger right all the elements so now how do you define infimum huh is the greatest lower bound right so uh, okay so i'll write it here in different color lower so it will be infimum okay simple and it should be not least right greatest and greatest lower bound is the infimum okay now let's look at one example uh, 0 to 3 union 5 to 7 now, can you tell me what is the infimum of this? What is the infimum? Zero. What is the supremum? Seven. What is the minimum? Zero. What is the maximum? Seven. Right. So, infimum, supremum will coincide with max and min, right? Min and max, right? So, whenever it does not, so infimum, supremum always exists. So therefore, in optimize, we, we end up doing a lot of optimization in this course. So that means max over all x f of x. So I want to maximize a function. Well, what is the guarantee that the maximum exists? We don't know. So to be on the safer side, we'll just say supremum. Okay. Instead of saying minimize, uh, we'll, to be on the safer side, we'll always say infimum. Okay. Then we need not worry about whether it exists. Or it will always exist. Right? And for practical purposes anyway, the infimum will be very good approximation for the minimum also, right? Whatever, practical minimum, right? Okay. So let me ask you uh, one uh, interesting question. So suppose I have a set which is just zero, one single term. What is the supremum and what is the infimum? Huh? What is the supremum? Uh, okay. Zero. Huh? Zero, zero, right? What is the infimum? Zero. zero. Uh, infimum supremum will coincide. Suppose I take a null set, you know what a null set is, right? This is uh, a slightly aside, but uh, it's interesting. So what do you, what can you say about the supremum of this set? Huh? Should not exist. No, uh, you cannot say that. No. Okay, let's go back. So suppose I have 0, 1. How do you find the supremum here? One way is, you know, practical way, but very crude way is you start some piston at infinity, let it move to the left. The moment it hit the set, you stop there and see what is the point. That's the supremum, right? Similarly, you start a piston at minus infinity and see where it stops. That's the infimum. So for zero, it will stop exactly at zero, right? Both the piston will come and stop, right? So zero is the infimum and supremum. But what about null set? Huh? Every so number is so this will go here and this will go here, right? And there is nothing to stop. So the supremum of a null set is infinity, and the infimum is minus infinity. And that's the only set where supremum is smaller than the infimum. Okay, you can mathematically, I mean, argue, right? So what is the supremum? Least upper bound, right? So any number uh, least upper bound, okay? So any number is an upper bound for null set because there is nothing there, right? By definition. So well. Crudely speaking, there is nothing there, right? So you take, keep on taking numbers and go on, you know, reducing the number, it will go to minus infinity and similarly for infinity, okay? This is just a, you know, fun stuff, okay? So now, uh, one very, very important thing. So uh, you know what a function is, right? It's a mapping, right? So when do you say that a function is continuous? Can somebody tell me how do you define continuity of a function? First, let's take a point and then see what is the continuity of a function. So let f be a function. This is how we write, right, mathematically. It takes a number and gives another number, right? So it's a mapping from r to r. B, a function. OK, now I want to talk about continuity of this function at some point x naught. So how do you, how do you uh, define continuity? 